Span, exploiting the tensile strength of steel. This presentation is brought to you by the Association of Collegiate Schools of Architecture. My name is Terry Meyer Volk. I teach architecture at the University of Waterloo, and my passion is steel. The act of spanning causes tensile forces in structures as they try to resist deflection. Steel is the only common structural material capable of resisting such loading while also remaining very light in appearance. A span takes us from a point of support to another point of support. Spans can therefore be of varying length as a function of the functional and aesthetic requirements of the space. As we approach our design problem and think about the impact of spanning on the creation of space, we have to initially ask ourselves, why are we making this span? And why do we not want columns? There is always a structural trade-off between the frequency of column spacing and the size or depth of the spanning members. The longer the span, the deeper the member. If compact floor-to-floor -floor heights are the objective, then shorter spans will decrease the overall height. Is it a large open space, like this airport, where a relatively column-free space is preferred? Or is it a relatively short distance? All spans have similar structural requirements of the spanning members, but the length of the span will have a direct impact on suitable choices. Is it a bridge, and therefore columns must be limited to allow for free movement beneath the structure for traffic or landscape? Is it a floor area that you desire to be column free? A large space frame was used here to facilitate the long spans between the columns. Will there be moving loads on the span? Whether pedestrians or vehicles, vibrations and movement must be accounted for in the design. One of the major factors in selecting a spanning system relates to its use as a roof or a floor system. Floor systems must necessarily have a flat top and roof systems can take on various shapes, both sloped and curved. Spanning methods vary from the very basic methods of joists and beams as pictured here to include two and three dimensional trusses, arches, and suspension systems. In all cases, the spacing of the spanning components must be coordinated with the ability of the dependent systems to span. So here, the profile of the deck with concrete topping must be capable of spanning between the joist or beam systems. Very lightweight trusses can be used instead of open web steel joists to improve appearance and make for a less industrial feel if left exposed. Hierarchy is evident in this detail where we can see that the decking is spanning between the castellated beams, which are in turn framing into the larger truss members. Here in a more complex roof arrangement, we see again that the decking is spanning between wide flange beams that are supported by larger trusses. The loads are transferred through the panel points of the trusses. The trusses are fabricated from rectangular HSS sections to give them a crisp appearance. The same application of hierarchy is applied to glazing systems for skylights. The structural supports for the glass are quite light and span between the beams, which in turn are carried by large tubular members. If looking for added strength to span, planar or two-dimensional trusses are the natural step up from simple beams. This 70-ton truss is being installed to span across an auditorium and will take the load of 11 floors of student residences above. The beams that will carry the floor load are lowered into place and connected to the large custom trusses. The transfer of loads normally occurs at the joint or panel point of the truss to limit the loading within the truss to pure axial loads acting in either tension or compression. Planar trusses can be fabricated from a variety of member shapes. Here, wide flange sections have been used as the top and bottom cords, with the vertical web members using HSS and the diagonal web members using ladders fabricated from angles and plates. Normally steel structures, with the exception of space frames and lattices, will have a primary direction of span. The canopy of this building, however, would appear to be spanning in two equal directions. Upon closer examination, we see that the span has a primary direction and that the cross span members have simply been sized to give the impression of a two-way span. 
This event structure uses a combination of steel trusses and fabric to create an undulating form. Here we can see along the length of the space and the variation in form of the curved trusses that are fabricated from square HSS members. The trusses are fabricated from curved HSS top and bottom cords. In this case, the fabric roof connects directly to the top cords without need of an intermediate system as the trusses are very closely spaced. Trusses can be fabricated to be three-dimensional, providing more interest to the design of the truss and shortening the spanning distance for the members that must span between the trusses. It is quite clear in this construction photo which steel is designed as AESS and which will be concealed. A light bracing system can be seen towards the front of the structure as well. Triangular trusses are easily combined with tree-like support systems to shorten the spans. The design here uses curved planar trusses to span between the larger trusses and support the roof system. Connections are made at the panel points of the larger trusses. In this design, the triangular tubular truss takes a continuous form to become the supporting column members. The challenge in the erection of this truss was creating an invisible welded splice between the long spanning member and the curved arch column. Small HSS stubs that have been welded to the tubular truss are used to transfer the loads from the roof directly to the panel points of the truss. The hierarchy of the roof system as it sits on the truss is quite clear. The triangular truss that supports the fabric roof for this concert hall is quite massive, even though it might look light from a distance. It is fabricated from round members. The web members have been kept to a smaller diameter than the exterior cords to make fabrication cleaner. Although curved in appearance, the truss is created from straight segments. Three-dimensional trusses can be large enough to act as bridge elements, allowing for passage through the center of the truss. The underside of the bridge must support a secondary structural system that in turn supports the walkway. The geometry of the truss is skewed for architectural interest. The welded tube-to-tube -tube connections are reinforced with plates as required for stability. This pedestrian bridge is used to provide a column-free connection across this major street in Oita, Japan. This is a view across the bridge. The steel trusses that form the sides have been fabricated from wide flange sections. The patterning is carried through into the wood lattice of the cultural center beyond. The diamond-shaped steel grid of the sides of the box truss bridge vary in density according to the loading condition. The top and bottom planes of the truss are fully enclosed, giving no hint as to their structure, other than to note that these planes are extremely thin. Arched triangular trusses combine the benefits of the arch with the stability of three dimensions. They are often used in bridges to allow for the suspension of the traffic platform. This bridge has quite simple fabrication of the joints that might appear welded from a distance, but actually employs simple lapped bolted connections. The large arched truss at Porto International Airport varies the curvature of the top and bottom cords of the truss. This project makes a very clear differentiation between the types of steel used on the various spans as a function of their span distance, loads, and visibility. The members used at the high level to support the roof are quite ordinary in their detailing, in contrast to the high level of detailing at the lower levels. A lighter steel system is used to create the spanning members that run perpendicular to the large trusses. This system is closed in on the bottom with solid gray panels that allow the expression of the large trusses to stand out. The trusses are revealed around the diamond-shaped skylights. A greatly simplified system is used in the departure lounge area of Porto Airport. Again, we see trusses being used for the longer spans and smaller beams for the shorter spans. There are various ways to approach creating curvature in a roof through the design of the spanning members. Three-dimensionality of the truss can also use force differentiated systems that employ rods or cables as the tensile members of the truss. The custom curved beams of this king post truss are heavy to take the compression loading, 
in contrast to the double cable bottom cord. The undulating shape of the Sage Theater required a different approach to creating the spans. Curved beams span across the building, with the curves in the opposing direction created by smaller curved wide flange sections that frame into the top side of the primary beams. Round HSS members brace between the smaller curved beams. Light cross bracing in the plane of the roof can also be seen. Layering the structure in this way creates clarity in the hierarchy. Round HSS members are used to create the form of the undulating roof at this railway station in Melbourne, Australia. Again, hierarchy is made clear by differentiating the sizes of the primary spanning members and those that are bracing the system in the opposing direction. The undulating roofs are supported by triangular trusses that run the length of the station. These triangular trusses also vary in dimension and curvature and are fabricated from round HSS to keep the look of the steel more uniform. I've only touched upon some of the basic ideas behind the design for span and steel design. For more information and lots of case study examples and photos to inspire your work, feel free to connect with me on my AESS Facebook page. And for more detailed information on designing with steel, check out these resources. They are filled with plenty of photos like the ones included in this presentation and more valuable tips on fabrication, erection, design, and detailing.